and welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. This is gonna be another segment of a beginner's guide to long range shooting. So in this segment, we're actually gonna be discussing optics. So optic setup, optic selection, what should you buy and why? So the first thing we're gonna discuss is preparing your rifle for optics. So let's just take, for example, this, I guess, spiffy looking Tika T3X varmint, chambered in 223. Now, when, before you choose your optic, you're still going to want to prepare it by buying the right rail. So I, I don't typically recommend the, the one-piece rails that you can buy that direct fit onto the threads for the Tikas because they're not going to help you get any MOAs back from your optic. Because keep in mind, an optic only has a certain amount of internal adjustment to use, and if you put a zero MOA rail, you're going to use half of that. While if you have a 10, a 20, or even a 30 MOA rail, you're going to be getting 10, 20, or 30 MOA back out of that optic. Okay, so generally speaking, you should go with a 20 MOA rail at least. So basically all the optics on the market will have more than 40 MOAs of internal adjustment for you to use, so you won't be uh, out of internal adjustment and zeroed at 100. So generally speaking, if you have a 20 MOA rail, you shouldn't get an optic with 40 MOA. Lucky for you, almost all optics nowadays, even let's say the Bushnell Forge, has I think 50, 50 or 56. So you'll be, be able to use that even let's say out to a thousand meters with a 20 MOA rail. So let's say you put a 20 MOA, MOA rail on this optic for a 223. Now at 20 MOA, I'd have to do the math, but you're, you're gonna be using that up fairly quickly. So you might even wanna consider a 30 MOA rail if you wanna let's say shoot at a thousand meters or even beyond with a 223, which you're kind of stretching how capable a 223 is even. So I would recommend going with at least a 20 MOA rail before you move on to ring selection. So you've chosen your rings. Um, a lot of people tend to, in the forums, they suggest going with a steel ring, going with aluminum ring. Honestly, I've been using aluminum rings for a long time. I've been using Mountain Tacticals for my, um, for my Tikas. No issues whatsoever. I definitely do recommend those. Now, in terms of buying the right scope rings, that's gonna be your next step. So, in my opinion, from my experience, I have used a variety of scope rings. Uh, I've used the dirt cheap ones, which you typically get, and let's say, let's say you buy a scope on eBay that's like 80 bucks. They come with some free scope rings. Those are the cheapest, kind of junkiest optics you can buy. Are they total trash? Can you use them? You can use them, but they won't, they won't hold your scope very well. Especially if you see the ones with tape in the bottom, the little black tape, that is something you're gonna to wanna to stay away from. Especially if you want a precision rifle, if you really wanna be able to use as much as you can out of the optic and you don't want any issues, avoid the ones at all cost with the black tape. Now there are rings that are a little bit more expensive. You're gonna to wanna to look around in my opinion, stay around 65, well, in Canadian dollars, stay above $80, like 70 to $100, and you have some good quality rings. I use a variety of different uh, rings. For instance, I use the MDT Premier rings, and those ones seem to be a very good value for the dollar. They're machined very well, and they fit very nicely on the, on the rail, on the optic. Now, the reason why I have kind of went from the really, really cheap scope rings for, from something basically like this, this is some really junky stuff, is I noticed that the scope will actually slide under under recoil. So for a 222 or even a 223, you probably could get away with something really junky, but you might notice some point of impact changes every time you take it out of the safe, just because the, the amount of pressure on the rings and the thing, it, 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 this isn't gonna be a precision thing. You're gonna want something, uh, I even like these ones from Sightmark. These are uh, some pretty beefy looking ones. This is actually some decent quality ones for some really high rings if you need them. And these will do quite well. You're gonna to wanna to spend, at least in US dollars, I'm guessing around $50, $60 and up to about $80, $100. That's when you're gonna get some really good quality. And I don't necessarily think you need to spend much more than that. So you've chosen your rings. Personally, I go with MDT. I have some Leupold Q, the quick detach ones. I'll show them anyway. I'll show you guys what I have. These, these are the scope rings that I'm currently using. These ones I definitely do recommend, I have had no issues with, and I think that you know they are a good bet. So, choosing your rifle scopes. So, the first thing you wanna look at is glass quality. It may or may not be as important as you think, depending on how far you're shooting. Let's say you have a 22 and you never shoot further than 50 meters. Well, honestly, a red dot's probably gonna be good enough for you. So even the cheapest three to nine by 40 will be great for you. However, if you're shooting, let's say from 10 yards to 200 yards and you actually want to do well, I would never spend, I never recommend spending less right now than about $300 on, on an optic. 
just because of what I've from what I've observed in my time now doing reviews is uh, you're gonna notice some errors in tracking. We had an optic that was, uh, I think it was $260. I'm not gonna name names, but it was about $260 and it tracked terribly. It was literally had about a 15 to 20% error rate. We did the tracking and on the elevation, it had about, uh, I'd say a good five inches more than where it should have been on, on our chart. And on the windage, on one of them, it was about like eight inches and on the other windage, it was, wasn't even on my chart anymore. So. That's why I typically recommend spend 300, 300 and up. So that's the cheapest I recommend you go. There is one company I do recommend at that price, which would be right on. They have really, really good quality, even in their low end stuff. So if you are really, really on a tight budget, check out their X1 Conquer. That's one that I have not had, but I did have their predecessor version, the right on RTS mod three gen two, six twenty four by 50, really good quality, even really nice quality glass, which is very surprising at that price. So uh, let's take it up a notch. So at about 450, so we are in an era where you can have amazing quality at a really reasonable price, which takes us to our first entry level optic on the mark on, on our list, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2. This optic, it, it, it really, I think it took the market by storm. <laughs> really? Uh, the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 for $450 US. Uh, it can come with the 20 MOA um, cantilever rail with a bubble lever and with a throw lever. Now, the markup on optics has always been high. Uh, it, it, I mean, like many things in many industries. Now, Arkin is one company that, I'm, I'm not sure how they do it, but they have made a fantastic quality optic at an extremely reasonable price. They have HD glass, 31 mils of internal adjustment, a zero stop, which we're gonna mention that a bit earlier, um, illumination at, at a cost 450. You never see that. You typically, like, let's say 10, 15 years ago, you'd be looking at something like this around $1,200 at least. Whereas now, I mean, like obviously technology has come a long way, but the Arkin really comes leaps and bounds in front of all the others. So if you're, let's say, looking for good glass, so it has HD glass. So you better than that, you'd have ED glass, extra low dispersion, but HD is very, very nice. I typically recommend like HD glass out to... I mean, I'm shooting at 750 meters, and you can tell your hits on steel. Um, it's not like the sharpest that I've seen. I've seen a lot of optics. Let's say with a $300 optic, you'll be able to tell, but you'll be like, eee, it's, it's, harder, to, it's harder to tell. Um, but with this, you'll be able to tell very, fairly well. With ED glass, you'll be able to tell even better, which will bring us to our next one. So anyway, this optic has 31 mils of internal adjustment, a zero stop, which, what does a zero stop do? It makes it so, let's say you're dialing, I don't know, you're shooting at 500, you dial to, let's say, four mils. Um, you're shooting at 700, let's say you're dialed to, uh, I don't know, 11 mils. And then you gotta come back, and then you're not sure how many times went past your zero. It's just so much easier to just turn it until it hits the zero stop, and then you know this is where I start again. So this is your 100 meter zero. So very, very convenient. Uh, just because whenever you're, let's say, trying to hurry yourself or you're doing a competition, it's just so much easier to have this, this, this return to zero kind of options. Whereas like in the past, I've gone past my zero and then I'm trying to find, figure out where the heck am I shooting? Why am I not on paper? Because I went past zero and went to the other zero underneath. So a zero stop will solve that issue. So if you're a beginner, um, it's not absolutely necessary until you start going, let's say, past your full revolution, which depending on what you're shooting, like a 22 rimfire, it's gonna happen. You know, the minute you go past, I'd say about 200, you might be going a full revolution. So anyway, uh, Arkin SH4 Gen 2 is my top, top, top recommendation in terms of optics at this price. If you have 450, there is nothing that I recommend more than the Arkin SH4 Gen 2. I will leave some links in the descriptions below for you. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic optic. The quality control on these is also really, really, really good. So let's put this one aside and let's take out the, take out the next one on the list. So if you want something better than that, uh, in terms of glass quality, in terms of internal turret mechanisms. The Element Titan is a Titan. So let's just get these boxes out of the way. The Element Titan. So what makes it better than, let's say, the Arkin? Well, first of all, the Element Titan has ED glass, so extra low dispersion. Um, has It's going to be even sharper at, let's say, 750 meters. You'll be shooting this at 1,000 meters, and you'll be very satisfied. In my opinion the way it works in terms of how much should you spend, in my opinion, is 
one dollar per meter that you're planning on shooting in distance. So if you're shooting 300 meters, yeah, buy a $300 optic, you're fine, don't worry about it. If you want to shoot at 600 meters, spend at least $600. If you're shooting at 1,000, spend it about $1,000. And that's about in Canadian dollars, so take a guess, 25% off, and you got your American how much you should spend. And I feel like this, that's the satisfaction ratio. You'll be, you'll be satisfied. You won't be left feeling like, you know, I just kind of wish I, I spent a little bit more money. So uh, better than the Arkin SH4, I would say the Element Titan, 5 to 25 by 56. So a good amount of internal adjustment. I believe this one has 80. I'm, I'm going to write how much MOA is worth of internal adjustment. Actually, this one's in mils. I'm going to have to write it down. It does have a good amount. It has a wide magnification range, wide field of view. It has illumination as well. Again, a really solid option with better last than the Arkin. So that would be my recommendation if you have a little bit more money and you want a little bit better quality. Oh, and also this has stainless steel internals on the turrets. Whereas brass, we all know it's a softer metal, it will wear itself out in the long run. It'll take a long time before you wear out the brass, but stainless steel will basically probably outlive you. <laughs> anyway, I mean, that's why they put lifetime warranties on a lot of these optics because they are going to last. So this is the Element Titan, my second recommendation in terms of uh, let's say your long range optic. Okay. So next we have, um, now what's important to know is after this, the, the, the margin of improvement per price, it, it goes up very, very little, like between, let's say a $300, $300 optic and an $800 optic. There is a huge difference in, in quality control, optical quality, uh, turrets, how much like the, if they track properly, there is a big, big, big difference. Now when you go from let's say I guess a thousand dollars Canadian to about two thousand dollars you do get better quality but you're not going to get let's say the 40 percent improvement in glass quality that you'll like that we saw let's say from a three hundred dollar optic to let's say a thousand dollar optic in Canadian dollars. You just don't see that. You might be seeing like a you know, 15% increase in glass quality, let's say at about $2,000, which brings us to our tracked optics. So tracked Toric Ultra HD. Now this is a behemoth. This is, if you have the money and you want to buy it once, cry once, you don't want to spend money on an optic again. You want some of the best glass that money can buy, tracked optics of five to 30 mag, actually 4.5 to 30 magnification with, I believe it has 30 mils of internal adjustment, locking turrets. Uh, the big difference between, let's say, a $1,000 uh, optic and and this one is the fit and finish is, is just like perfect. I mean, then again, do you really, is this necessary for a thousand meters? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. But is, is it nice? Oh, yes, it is. And these, these turrets track like perfectly. Whereas let's say even at $1,000, they could be just slightly off. You will not see any error in tracking and you will have absolutely nothing to compare, complain about. Uh, it does have illumination, which I mean, I guess at this price it should. Um, and yeah, and the glass quality is better than what we saw at like $1,000. You definitely will notice better quality in optics with the tracked Toric. So most certainly, um, again, here we're looking at, I think it's about $2,200 Canadian or about $1,700 US. So definitely a pricey optic. This isn't, this isn't going to be for everybody. But then again, a lot of people spend a lot of money on their car, which is going to depreciate and be worth nothing in about 10 years. Whereas optics, firearms, they're still worth, at, they may lose 25% at worst case scenario or retain their value or actually increase in value. So, I mean, that's how I spend my money. <laughs> I drive a ratty old rusty Toyota Corolla, but I have Tikas, I have custom rifles because at least they're going to retain value and not going to get rusty and fall apart. So uh, yeah, this is an optic that I definitely do recommend the track torque, the 5 to 30. You won't be reg reg regretting this optic if you do pick it up. It has amazing glass and tons of internal adjustment for the extreme long range shooter. So this is where we go from long range, for example, from the, uh, the Element Titan to something that you can do extreme long range with. I mean, then again, people have done extreme long range with, let's say the Vortex Strike Eagle, the Element Titan. It's just spotting your hits is doable if it's ideal conditions. Well, with the Track Torque, it, you can get away with a little bit better. You can see a little bit more of your, your misses, of your hits. It's gonna be a little bit easier, but just a little bit. That That's what we gain when we spend uh, a lot more money in this. So, I mean, you're getting a lot better quality, but 
you see a very marginal difference in terms of glass, which every little bit helps when you're shooting long range and extreme long range. Okay, so uh, next on our list in terms of amazing optics is the US Optics Foundation 25X. Again, here, as you guys notice, we are going up in price substantially. This is no slouch in terms of quality, in terms of price, in terms of what it delivers, um, which is very similar, I guess, to the Tractoric in, in the, those, that sense. It's got a ton of internal adjustment, glass that you will write home about, <laughs> that it will impress you. Fit and finish on this is beautiful. Everything is super smooth, like really, really nice. It's got a zero stop, obviously. And definitely a recommendation. If you're doing extreme long range, um, this is something that you might want to have on your rifle. Keep in mind, these are not cheap. Our more entry level ones where I recommend people stay. If you're new to the sport, you don't want to, you don't want to, let's say, sink all your investments in before you know if you really like it. I, I, I typically recommend somebody go with, you know, maybe like the Arkin SH4 Gen 2 or an Element Titan or a Vortex Strike Eagle. Something around there, at least there, you really are going to be satisfied. You're going to know that... Uh, if you don't like it in the end, or which I don't know why you wouldn't because it's so much fun. If you have a good place to shoot, which I'm extremely lucky. I have a farmer's field that I that I shoot in and I'm extremely lucky that I can shoot there. And it really actually made me appreciate so much more the, the more expensive optics because I could actually tell that like, wow, I take let's say a $300 optic, put it beside a $1,000 optic and go, that's a pretty impressive difference. And then I put it beside like the track torque and I'm like, that's, that, there's, there's still a difference. And then beside this one, which is a 30, I think 32, 3, $300 optic US, or about $4,000 Canadian. And you, you still see a little bit of difference, which I mean, it depends. What, what, do, you, what do you need? Where, how, how far are you shooting? If you're doing extreme long range and you have the money, you have the funds to do it, check out one of these two optics. If you're more, uh, if you really want to be a bit more conservative, you know what, stay with the Arkin SH4 or the Element Titan. These will get you there and you can shoot reliably with these optics and they track very well. I've tested them on the channel. I'll, links, I'll leave links to all the videos that we've done on those so you can have confidence in it. So anyway, um, that's my recommendations in terms of like uh, optics. What is the optic you should buy? Yeah, you know what, just for the fun of it, a few months ago I bought the, what is it, the UUQ 4 to 12 by, what is it, 40 or 50? It's got Picatinny rails all around the sides. It looks cheesy. It's from Amazon, it was an Amazon special. It was like 100 bucks. And just for the hell of it, I said, you know what, I wanna, I wanna take this long range shooting. Why? I don't know. Just just for the challenge. And I actually did it. So I, I was actually ringing a four inch steel gong with my Ruger RPR, which uh, <laughs> what I did notice about that optic is the glass is atrocious, like really bad. It's like so blurry. I could barely make out the steel plates at that distance with that optic. But I mean, I, I could just make them out and I could just see them swinging after I hit it, which it doesn't mean that it can't be done with cheaper stuff. It just means that it won't be as easy. You're just gonna be facing so many more challenges. Like that optic, um, one MOA, one real MOA is actually equivalent in that optic to 0 0.8. So you would dial one MOA, but actually in reality, you're dialing 0 0.8. So I was dialing like 32 MOA uh, on my, I think I was shooting my 6.5. Actually, no, I, was, I don't quite recall. It was a 6.5, but anyway, I was dialed far more than I normally would have necessarily had to do if I had an optic that tracked properly. So there's that. And then again, at that price, you don't have reliability, could break at any time, which I did expect. I bought the optic knowing that it could die midway in testing and I didn't care. I just did it just because, just for the fun of it. But I definitely recommend don't go lower than 300. And if you have maybe a little less than that, go with the right on X1 Conquer. Uh, it is if they have fantastic quality control, even on their more budget stuff. If you have more than the money than that, I recommend go with the Arkin SH4 Gen 2, 6 to 24 by 50. You will most certainly be satisfied. And they're finally back in stock after like, was it a year and a half of them? Like six to 12, actually it was like six to 16 weeks back ordered at one point. But finally they're back in stock so you can get them. And they have all these optics that we have on the table all have a lifetime guarantee. So you will be covered for life. Anyway, uh, that covers basically a beginner's guide to long range shooting for the optics portion of this review. So if you guys are looking at any of the products, I'll leave some links in the descriptions below for you so you don't have to go searching around for them. Some of them are affiliate links, some of them are not. So just keep that in mind. The affiliate links do support the channel and we really do appreciate having unbiased content so that you can have confidence knowing that we're bringing you this from our opinion, not from someone's wallet. So anyway, thanks for watching Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. See you next time.